Hi everyone, this is Heidi from My Reading Life. I'm here today to film the first part of my September wrap up. Um, I'm going to talk about, I think, six or seven books for, in this segment, and then I'll have to do another one at the end of September. I've already read quite a few books this month, so just wanted to get through some of these and not have too many for my wrap up at the end of September. So the very first book I'd like to talk about today is Flight Behavior by Barbara Kingsolver. If you remember, I did a video several weeks ago where I tried the first chapter of three books that I had purchased at a library book sale over a year ago, and this was my first pick from those three books. Um, this is a, a novel about a woman, see, I'm super bad with names, so I'm gonna look up her name. Della Robia, I believe is how you say it. And the book opens, we're following Della Robia, is she is about to embark on, an, on uh, a little adventure that may implode her marriage and her entire life. Della Robia is a young woman in her late 20s, early 30s, who is married and has two children. Um, she got married very young, right uh, at the end of high school, um, and had her children fairly young. And she um, is sort of at the point of her life where she's questioning all of her choices and doesn't know if she's really happy where she is, if she could be happy somewhere else, or anything like that. As she's on her way to her adventure or misadventure, misadventure as it may be, she experiences or she sees what she thinks is a um, some sort of religious... Uh, or miracle type um, event and she really has no way to put it into context and so to her it's a sign from God that says she's doing the wrong thing so she aborts her mission and the story goes on from there I really loved this book this book is a has a nature um, aspect to it because the um, phenomenon that Della Robia observes is not um, a vision from God. In fact, it is something else and that particular event sort of snowballs into things happening, things happening in Della Robia's life that she couldn't have imagined happening. So she gets exposed to science and she learns a lot. Della Robia is a very interesting character, I think one that we don't often see in literary fiction in that she is a uh, fairly uneducated. She only had a high school um, education. She lives in a rural area in the south. She comes from a religious community, although she is certainly questioning um, her faith. And she smokes and she has uh, a best friend who is, um, when she's with her best friend, they're quite uh, foul-mouthed and rowdy. And she's questioning, you know, all of her choices about being a parent and having a family and being married. And it's just not a voice we, I mean, the questioning of the marriage and having children and all that is one thing, but Della Robia herself as a character, as a, um, as an uneducated person, as a person who smokes, as a person who's, you know, sheltered, has never been anywhere beyond her small county in the South in her life, and has no expectation that she ever will go anywhere other than this small place in the world. Um, and how that has, you know, kind of, kept her innocent in a lot of ways of things that are going on in the wider world and how she begins to break out of that shell and start to learn more about the world and more about herself and her journey to do that and her journey of learning that it's okay to want things for herself. It's okay to want to, you know, see where something goes for herself. I just thought it was awesome. I love this story. I would highly recommend it. If you're into literary fiction about women um, and and with a little bit of a nature background, I think you would like this um, story. I found it really compelling. Then the next thing I finished was an audiobook and it's, it was an audio, audible original short and it was called The Coming Storm by Michael Lewis. Michael Lewis is a fairly well-known nonfiction author and this um, audible short is basically the first few chapters of an upcoming book that's going to be released by him this fall and the chapters focus on um, extreme weather events and how we predict things like tornadoes and hurricanes, where the data comes from, and how that data is under attack because it's generally data that's gathered by the government and how our current United States government is not doing a good job of um, 
managing how we collect data or even how we use data. And I found it super interesting and I really can't wait to read um, the entire book by Michael Lewis when it comes out this fall. Um, the Coming Storm took it was only about an hour and a half to two hours long um, in audio. Then I read uh, a crime fiction book. This is The Blood Spilt by Asa Larson. This is a translated um, work of fiction and the uh, it's translated by Marlene Delargi. And I read this again for Women in Translation. Um, I think I was actually finished this book after Women in Translation uh, month and the week read along were over, but still it's a book in translation if you're looking for that sort of thing. Um, however, I will say this was not a very successful book for me and I'm starting to think that maybe I don't get along with Scandinavian crime novels. Um, this book follow is, I think it's actually book two in a series, um, and the main character is Rebecca Martinson, and in, I guess in the first book she was involved in some kind of traumatic um, murder type thing, and she's back in this book, um, but she is very peripheral to the story to the point of her all of her sections probably could have been cut out and nothing would have changed in this story. So I didn't understand why she needed to be there other than to connect this story to the previous one. Um, but the there is a policewoman, not Rebecca, because Rebecca is a lawyer, um, who is trying to solve the murder of a female priest who was um, brutally murdered and then hung up in her church. And so she goes to this small town, or it's this, I guess the policewoman is from the small town. Um, this attorney is somehow brought to this small town as well for strange and weird reasons that didn't really fit the story. And so, and these two women connect at odd times, although the lawyer really isn't involved in solving the murder. And in fact, nobody's really involved in solving the murder. It sort of resolves itself in the end. <laughs> it was just like the whole time, like, what's even the point of this story? I really, I didn't know. So it wasn't successful for me. Can't recommend it. Sorry about that. The next book I read was uh, on my e-reader and it was Red Clocks by Lenny Zumas. This has been um, discussed quite widely on booktube and throughout the bookish world. This is a sort of dystopian fiction um, where uh, the story is told from several different perspectives, four different women, I believe it was four different women. The chapters are kind of alternating and we're learning through each of them, each of their um, narratives, what's going on in the broader um, the broader world. But basically it's sort of near future or alternative present day where um, a, a law has just been passed in the United States called the Personhood Amendment which makes um, it illegal to have, for women to have abortions because it makes, um, it declares that from the moment of conception, um, the fetus is a person with all the rights um, there too. And so each of the women in the novel is dealing with this new law in different ways. We have a young mother, we have um, a woman who is a uh, sort of a healer, a natural healer, um, who's helping women with um, sort of reproductive issues on the side, which is illegal. Um, there's a young girl who's in, a teenager and who gets pregnant and is trying to determine what she's gonna do now that abortion is no longer um, an option for her. And then so the mother, there was the mother who's married and has a child, the older woman who lives in the forest that was a healer, the young girl who was a teenager who gets pregnant, and then a single woman who wants to have a child um, and is trying before the, before, um, there's also been a law passed that um, you can't adopt a child unless you are married. It has to have two people uh, to be parents in order to adopt. So she's trying to race the clock and get, um, have a successful in vitro fertilization before that law passes. I liked this story, or I guess I wasn't as compelled by it as I had anticipated that I would be. Um, I enjoyed, I maybe, maybe what the problem for me with this book is, is that it's hitting far too close to home. It was way too easy to see how this could happen and how a law like that can get passed in the United States because nobody's kind of paying attention and nobody, you know, a select group of people is paying attention, but the wider 
population is not paying attention and then the law gets passed and then all of a sudden everybody who is an impact is not impacted by the law is like oh well yeah that's too bad we probably shouldn't have that but they don't feel compelled to do anything about it because it doesn't impact them personally and it's just hitting way too close to home for me and so I read the whole book just feeling like depressed like oh god I can totally see how this would happen in fact this may happen and and I just I felt a sense of helplessness and depression and anger and I just it wasn't very fun to read <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you although it's a really good novel and and all of that so I don't think it was the novel's fault it was just my reaction to reading it at this particular point in our nation's history. The next book I read was far more successful for me and that was There There by Tommy Orange. Um, this has been also all over booktube recently. Most people love this although I was just watching a video from Chris over at Chris's Bookish Cauldron and he really didn't like it and that was super interesting to hear his point of view um, because all the other reviews of this I've heard, while some people have been kind of lukewarm about it, most everybody's been positive. And so it was interesting to get his perspective as to what he thought about this book. I really liked it. Um, this is a book that's told sort of in, um, in short stories, interconnected short stories, although they are not, um, they're not short stories in that they're not completely, uh, contained within themselves but it, it, this narrative actually kind of reminded me of Cloud Atlas. Um, if any of you have read the book Cloud Atlas you know that it it's kind of like a um, each chapter is a different it's a totally different story but they're all interconnected and they're different time periods and everything and you kind of it's like a nesting doll it's like a Russian nesting doll in that you start with the outer shell and you go in 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 and then when you get to the inside you you step back out again following those same layered narratives on the way out and this was similar to that only it wasn't a in and then out kind of thing it was more of a spiral where every time you went around you were starting to see how all the characters connected together and I just loved the um, structure and format of how this was put together I thought it was really pleasing to read um, I really enjoyed the feeling of seeing how everything connected together because um, we're following probably like 12 or 14 different narratives all um, Native American that who are all heading towards this powwow that's being held in Oakland California and this is the story as everyone knows I'm sure that's been on booktube of urban Indians not reservation Indians and it was fascinating and what was also fascinating to me about this was Tommy Orange's willingness to talk about social problems from the perspective of these characters that aren't often discussed whether it be obesity um, you know there was sexual uh, sexual assault rape um, there's lots of there's a lot of social issues thrown into this book and I can see um, Chris's point in that sometimes it felt like the author was just like throwing everything into one book um, and and but for me that didn't detra distract me from my enjoyment of it I really liked a lot of these characters even though they weren't particularly likable I could empathize with where they were coming from um, and I liked the glimpse of um, Oakland as a place um, as a setting that was really uh, unusual for me um, to read about and I liked how history was brought into this book in a way that didn't feel um, info dumpy it felt part of the narrative to me so for me this was a successful book mostly because I really enjoyed the format and the style of how this book was told I didn't love the ending I thought the ending was really rushed and I had to read it a couple of times to sort of figure out what had happened and I had I kind of wished that more time had been spent fleshing that part out um, but I think it was part of the narrative style to end it that way so it was probably um, deliberate on the author's part I just didn't find that part as successful as I had the rest of the novel then I finished um, my latest presidential biography this is Andrew Johnson by Hans L. Trefaus, 
I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right. Um, probably not. And this is a chunker of a um, nonfiction with very small print. And let's just say Andrew Johnson was not a super great guy. He was like the Donald Trump of the 1800s. He basically almost undid everything Abraham Lincoln has had um, succeeded in doing during his presidency. He um, became president because Abraham Lincoln had been killed. And so he uh, sort of was thrust into the role and he was a racist and he did everything in his power to ensure that the reconstruction would not work, would not um, be done in the way that Abraham Lincoln had wanted it to be done and the rest of the country wanted it to be done. He bent over backwards to give concessions to the um, folks who had been instrumental in getting the southern states to secede um, prior to the Civil War and was instrumental in making sure that um, uh, the newly freed African Americans were not given the right to vote, even though that had been um, the plan, was to give them the right to vote. So he was actually a really shitty president, and um, it was really awful to read this book because he was just awful, and the whole time I just wanted to chuck it across the room. And also, if you're going to read a biography of Andrew Johnson, I would not recommend that you read this one. It was not well written. It was really, it didn't flow well. It was overly detailed and overly detailed and just boring in most of it. So um, I can't recommend it. And I'm certainly not going to read anything more about Andrew Johnson specifically. Although if he's in if he's in a uh, nonfiction that I'm reading, so be it. But as far as reading another biography of him, no thanks. I've had enough of good old Andrew Johnson. The last book I want to talk about in this wrap-up is another nonfiction, and it's Giving Up the Ghost, a memoir by Hilary Mantel. Um, I had picked up this book because um, I heard Britta Bowler talk about it, and it's about, um, as it being about uh, Hilary Mantel's uh, dealing with a long-term chronic illness, endometriosis, um, and I was not totally... Um, Let's, how can I say this? I didn't enjoy this book in its entirety. The, it's very um, opaque. It's hard to connect with. Hilary Mantel can write, no doubt, but sometimes she writes things in such a way I didn't know what the heck she was talking about. So she, you know, is writing it in this, you know, beautiful metaphorical way or whatever, and I'm like, what is she talking about? I didn't always get her what she was trying to say. And certainly in the first half of the book, her illness and the illnesses that she's experiencing as a child, because the first half of the book is all about her childhood, it's never clear what the heck is going on. And maybe that's because that was how it was for her as a child. It probably was that way. But it was really difficult to read from my point of view, trying to, I would have liked it to be more straightforward and more clear cut what she was experiencing. There was other issues that were going on with her family that I never really, could understand what was going on, um, and it seemed to dwell too long on the childhood part. Once we get into her young adulthood and into her adulthood, um, I enjoyed it a lot more. I thought it was more um, clear cut what was happening to her, a, a lot more straightforward on her illness and what she was experiencing um, and how um, her illnesses were impacting the rest of her life. So I did enjoy the second half of the book much more than the first half, but overall I cannot say that this was that big of a success for me. So those are the books that I read in the first half of September. Um, my reading has been going really well in this month and um, I, look, I have some uh, books on the go right now that are excellent and I look forward to talking about them with you uh, in the weeks to come. In the meantime, I hope you're all reading something great and I will talk to you later.